Well, welcome back. Tuesday, July 27th, 2021. It's a delight to have with us the um, my producer pro tem today is Chris Llewellyn, our vice president of all things important. Bill will be back tomorrow. Chris, thanks for doing this. Thanks for joining us. It's always good to see you and have you in the commander's chair. Welcome. Aye, aye, Captain. You doing all right? Doing good. All right. There's a lot we got to plow through, most of it emanating from D.C. What was it? Uh, Pericles said all good things flow from the city, not this city, not this district, not today, not this week, maybe not this year. Chris, uh, let's start off with a little audio. Can we start with what you uh, have queued up for me? So with um, with regards to the never seen, I'm sure I've seen videos of officers being attacked and people resisting arrest. But to clarify, it's never been the assault on the skills that we have seen like that before. Um, I just wanted to clarify that. Thanks. Is this a police officer talking about last summer? Because a lot of them said those things last summer. No, it's a policeman, a Capitol policeman, talking about what he saw on January 6th uh, of this year in Washington, D.C., at the kangaroo court trial that is taking place over the origins of January 6th. If you're confused about the causes and origins of January 6th at this point, because there are hearings on them, and you thought somewhere in the back of their, your mind with some of the same figures like John and Raskin, Congressman Raskin from Maryland up there, and uh, Adam Schiff, if you're confused, that may, haven't we been through this? The answer is yes. Of course we have already been through this. Nancy and Adam and Jamin already told us Donald Trump was the cause of this riot. He instigated it. He started it. You will recall for those that haven't been subject to the leftist's progressive memory hole, that there was an impeachment trial of Donald Trump on that very issue, instigating the insurrection. So here we have an entirely Democratic Party investigation, entirely Democratic Party. You want to tell me there are two Republicans on there? That's fine, but they were selected by Nancy Pelosi. The minority leader, McCarthy, Kevin McCarthy, he nominated Republicans, as was his charge, and she vetoed them. You see, this, this, this assault on free speech doesn't just extend to the citizens. It extends to any Republican the left on that day or in that moment disagrees with. Kevin McCarthy deigned to put Jim Jordan on that panel, but she couldn't allow that because she said— Jim Jordan was a Trump partisan. Well, she's a Trump nonpartisan. Why does she get to tell the Republicans who can represent them? That's called an assault on democracy. Last I checked. Take me to audio clip two, please. Sergeant Cannell. This is Jamin Officer Raskin. Officer Fanon, Officer Hodges, Officer Dunn. You are great law enforcement officers and a hero to law enforcement officers across the country. You're a great public servants. You are here to public servants across the country, but you are great Americans and you are heroes to all of America. And long after you are gone, you will be remembered as heroes to our country, along with your fellow officers. And those who attacked you and those who beat you are fascist traitors to our country and will be remembered forever as fascist traitors. Are they fascist traitors to our country who did all those same exact things times 15, times 15, literally times 15 last summer? You heard no Democratic congressman, not Chairman Raskin. You heard no Democratic senator, not Kamala Harris, say that kind of thing to the cops who were beaten up and assaulted last summer. You heard no such commentary from them. Instead, you heard about how racist America is, how America has to come to grips with its racism, and how it was a legitimate public health issue to engage in that kind of activity because it was on par, if not worse, than COVID. You heard no salute, you heard no shout outs to, and you saw no salutes 
No attaboys to the police from the Democrats last summer. They were about defunding them, not telling them how brave and courageous they were. Final audio clip for right now, Chris. You made a really interesting point. You said you'd seen protests for many, many years. You'd seen even civil disobedience for many years. There's an effort today to portray the events of January 6th like some kind of uh, resurrection of Dr. King's March on Washington Stop. in 1963. Where? Who? I want to know one Republican anyone has heard of in elected office or not, one conservative anyone has heard of in elected office or not, who has said that this was like the Martin Luther King for the Republicans or the conservatives, or this was equivalent to Martin Luther King's March on Washington. Find me one. You ever heard the phrase straw man? This, it's, it's known as a logical fallacy. It's a logical fallacy because it's simply setting up an argument against something that was never made. No one in any responsible position in the Republican Party or the conservative movement compared this to the Martin Luther King March in Washington, D.C. You find me your Mars most ardent Trump supporter. Does Jim Jordan count? Just take one. Go look up their tweets on January 6th. I did. Here's a tweet from Jim Jordan on January 6th in the midst of the riot. Quote, stop the violence, support the Capitol Police, period, close quote. Couldn't be more clear. And that's exactly what other Republicans, particularly defenders of Donald Trump, tweeted on January 6th. Who compared it to Martin Luther King? Nobody, Professor Raskin. Continue, Chris, please. You know, and I've seen a lot of protests here, too. I've seen the March for Our Lives that the young people did uh, about gun violence. I see people marching for D.C. statehood, arguing for their rights to representation uh, in Congress. And I've seen civil disobedience. But was this like any of those rallies or marches or demonstrations? What was interesting, seen? Thanks, Chris. Not, well, what you, you, you know what stuck out, stood out for me there? Perfectly good opportunity, perfectly good to show this isn't a partisan witch hunt. And yet Jam and Raskin flushed that opportunity down the toilet right there and said the quiet part out loud, which didn't need to be said because we all know what it's about. Every example of a peaceful protest he mentioned was a left-wing progressive peaceful protest. Are you trying to tell me there are not protests in D.C.? He could have cited also to show that this was a marginal group. This was a group that didn't represent the kinds of typical free speech and freedom of associations that take place in Washington, D.C. all the time. Nothing about the March for Life. Anyone remember Nick Sandman? It was a peaceful march until they got in Nick Sandman's face. So much do they hate that march, which is bigger than all those other marches Jam and Raskin mentioned, but he couldn't mention the March for Life or other conservative marches in Washington, D.C. It showed you it was a partisan witch hunt. Only left progressive causes, marches, and viewpoints will be accepted in this kangaroo court. I, 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 I wonder if some of you are thinking when we use the word phrase kangaroo court where it comes from. The etymology is actually nothing to do with Australia or kangaroos. It's a little cloudy, actually, where the origin came from. But I'm willing to tell you right now, as someone who kind of understands a bit of the English language, that if we wanted an example of the etymological origins of a real kangaroo court, stripped of any other um, stripped of any other conceit, this is it. This is it. You have the Democrats finally lecturing the American public on how important and how much they love the police. You have the Democrats tarring all Republicans and conservatives with the violence of January 6th. And you have the Democrats telling Republicans who they can and cannot have on this quote-unquote bipartisan panel, even though the Democrats have already made up their mind, talking about the root origins, the causes of the riot on January 6th, first being Donald Trump, then being white supremacy. If you think it's just the Democrats, don't.
it's the New York Times 2, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what their Department of Justice reporter wrote today after watching the hearings. It won't make your stomach turn. It won't make your head spin. It'll just confirm everything you've already believed about the New York Times, the left, progressives, and it may make you think, you know what? Maybe it's time for some kind of new resistance.